All righty, here we go, guys. Welcome, everybody. Thanks tuning in. Cheers. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. You started off perfectly. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Ah, uh, yes. Come on, Dad. So, you guys, welcome to the kickoff week here, New York Cocktail Expo Online Week. Thanks for joining us. My name is Matt Corey. I'm the founder of New York Cocktail Expo, and we are kicking it off with the best spirits in cocktails competition with the best whiskey in the old fashioned. So we're going to say cheers to you. Uh, go ahead and get in the chat and let us know where you're at. Uh, cheers to you guys. Tell us know where you're chiming in from. And we're going to be go ahead and tasting some old fashions tonight. We're going to be doing this competition. We've got a great coming in from Caramel. Anna, Casey, cheers to you. Welcome. Cheers from Connecticut. Connecticut. Joshua, Lorena from Pittsburgh. Well, they're flying in here. Patchog, Long Island. Okay, guys, that's great. Here from DC. Woo! Okay, guys, yeah, we might have a little bit of an echo. Uh, tune in with us. We're dealing with a little bit of technology. Uh, guys, we're going to say cheers to you. Go ahead and keep telling us where you're from. And we're going to introduce you to our judges panel because we got a few tastings to get through tonight, guys. Um, Go ahead. First, guys, I want to introduce you to our first judge, Samantha Tsuga from The Dead Rabbit. She is a co-head bartender at The Dead Rabbit in New York City and the New York brand ambassador for Shoru Spirits. She's competed in multiple competitions and was named New York's most imaginative bartender with Bombay Sapphire in 2018. Cheers, Sam. Thanks for joining us. Woo! How are you? Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and keep moving down the line. Um, let's go ahead and introduce Alice Tang. How are you, Alice? Cheers. Alice Tang, you guys. <laughs> the manager of UES Bar. Lots of stuff going on. She decided to change her life and cross the border from Canada to the U.S. Woo, Canada. Found a home here in New York City in 2007. She came to New York to pursue a career in graphic and fashion design. Graduated from Parsons School of Design in 2012. And she's just found a home in hospitality. She fell in love with it. And now she's doing some really creative stuff at UES Bar. So cheers, Alice. Thanks for being here with us. Um, guys, cheers Thank to you. you. Can you in? Yeah. So just so you know, as I'm going through, we are having a great start old-fashioned here. And we hope you guys, who's having an old-fashioned? Ray, long time, Matt. Sure, cheers. Mark. Hanging, hanging with you from Canton, Ohio. Man, we really got a national crowd here. Well, I'll tell you what, moving along. Moving along, let's get to our next judge. Let's check out Mr. Souther Teague, a good friend of mine, Souther Teague. Why don't you turn your microphone on for us? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're having a good night. It's a night of friends. We're going to be tasting old fashions. Souther Teague, um, author, guys, of... I'm just here for the drinks and a great quality cocktail book. Let's get Glisten and the owner of Margo. Cheers. We're so happy to have you with us here, Souther. Cheers happy to, to you. be here. Thanks so much. Also, we have with us Nick Bennett, bar captain of Porchlight Bar, formerly of the acclaimed Booker <laughs> and Dax. Cheers, Nick. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and uh, finally, we're going to be tuning in here saying hello to our executive judge who's been with us from the very Ooh. beginning of New York Cocktail Expo. Um, we got Eamon Rocky, creator of Rocky's Botanical Liqueur. Delicious liqueur, you guys gotta check it. How you doing, Eamon? Thanks for joining us. Never been better, thanks, man. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, guys, so cheers, have a sip. Who's having an old fashioned? Old fashioned in hand, Jimmy Lawler. Very cool, cheers to you guys. So guys, we are here today um, at a very special occasion. We are commemorating commemorating the centennial anniversary of the Prohibition, 1920 to 2020. Uh, we kind of forgot about that in the mix of everything that's going on. And ironically, we're here in the week of the repeal, repeal week, right? December 1st through the 7th is New York Cocktail Expo week, I believe it's the 5th, 87th, and 87th anniversary of the uh, repeal, is that correct? Uh, so what a tremendous occasion. And we are here commemorating this with our 2020 nominated bar, Dutch Kills, who is nominated for making one of the most respected and revered old fashions here in New York. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just say congratulations to Dutch Kills. Um, 
Congratulations. It's a huge honor. We're so honored to be here. And I'm going to introduce you to head bartender, Maddie Clark, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the old fashioned, a little bit about Dutch kills. And I'm going to casually just kind of turn my, my computer screen over here so that we can say hi and, and you guys can meet Maddie, right? So here, let's do that. Here you go. It's nice and easy. There we go. Hey, Maddie. Hey, man. How you doing? Doing well, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Give myself a, a mini old fashioned. Yeah. <laughs> cheers, cheers to you. Um, yeah, we are social distancing. So thank you so much yeah. for having everybody. Yeah, of course. So this is an iconic bar, a legendary bar. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the history of Dutch Kills? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we opened in 2009. Um, uh, Richard Picado and Sas Petrowski, who opened uh, Milk and Honey and uh, the local little branch where Richie got his start, actually. Uh, they opened in 2009. Um, and everybody said they were crazy because Long Island City was kind of a wasteland oh, back then. Nobody came here. Nobody lived here. Um, and it's turned out to be kind of a really smart gamble, and it's been amazing. Um, you know, it, it's amazing to open a bar uh, in a neighborhood that, that just responded so well to it. Um, I don't think anybody realized even when we opened, I mean, I was actually, on day one, I was actually the, the bouncer when we opened this bar. Uh, so I had no idea. I remember coming here and just being like, really? I'm, I'm this? this is, I'm going to have to check IDs here? Wow. Um, and it, it's the, the change in the neighborhood, the change in the vibe has been amazing. Um, people have, have just loved this bar from the beginning. It's, it's, it's great to be a part of it. You know, we have regulars. We've had regulars for the full... Uh, almost 11 years now. Yeah, since wow. Open. Um, That's right. 10 years uh, last yeah. year, right? 10 years last that. year. Or was it? Yeah. yeah. No, 11 years oh, last year. Wow. Okay. Wow. Amazing. So, yeah, almost 12 years. That's fantastic. Yeah. And we love yeah, yeah. having you here and, and keeping that legacy alive yeah. tonight. Um, so great. Can you tell us just for our audience a bit about the history of the old fashioned, just a bit about that, and then the history of the Dutch kills old fashioned, and then maybe get into the recipe and what we're drinking yeah, to yeah. start. So, so uh, I mean, in terms of the old fashioned. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of speculation on it, but it, it, it's one of the, like, the oldest cocktails in terms of like the recipe. Um, it was originally, you know, it wasn't spirit specific, although it was most commonly whiskey and, and uh, brandy, but people made it with, with gin and rum as well. I think it goes back as far as like 18, like the early 1800s, 1806 or 1813 might be the first time it's in print. Um, and it was just bitters, sugar, uh, loaf, loaf sugar, like big chunks of sugar, um, water, and and whiskey or, or spirit, really, even back then. Right on. Um, and then as more ingredients became uh, available, they changed the variations on it. More cocktails became available. Uh, the, 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 what bartending is now kind of was in its infancy back then, but people were trying different things, coming up with cocktails. Uh, it was kind of, it wasn't reactioning against that, but it was, uh, the, the, the term old fashioned came from people saying, I want an old fashioned cocktail, like basically meaning bitters, sugar, a little bit of water and spirit. Um, and then it kind of became codified as an old fashioned with whiskey or brandy later in the 1800s. Okay, wow. And now it came kind of, well, we know we see different variations over here. So tell us yeah. a bit about Dutch Kills Old Fashioned, the history of it, and then get into your recipe and what the recipe we're using tonight for our tasting. Yeah, so I mean, uh, kind of follow up to that. I mean, as we get into the, the, the 1900s, mid 1900s, the old fashioned changed. It became a much sweeter drink, a lot more watered down, a soda water, uh, oranges and cherries muddled into it um, and then uh, I think it was I mean I, I don't know who decided that we were going to go back to like that classic 1800 style old-fashioned but that's definitely something Sasha wanted to do and something we carried on here um, so that recipe is a uh, sugar cube you know four to five dashes of Angostura bitters mm -hmm. um, two ounces of bourbon and uh, 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 we do a dash of soda water just to kind of uh, uh, kind of break down the sugar cube a little bit so that it's, it's drinkable quickly. 
Um, but it is a slow sipper drink. Like you want that sugar to kind of slowly melt and change over time. Um, and that's kind of where our recipe comes from. Um, yeah. You know, using the large block ice that we use, like the hundred weight ice, uh, which is uh, dense, heavy ice. Uh, it melts slowly, but the heat exchange is the same, so it, it cools your drink down, and uh, it doesn't doesn't melt quickly. Doesn't water down. Right, and that's why it's such also great old fashioned. Really, you got to use that big rock. The big rock matters, even if you're even if you're not using like fancy like ice, using a big piece of ice really does make because right. it just it will melt slowly. You guys are known for big ice. We are known for big ice. Right, you have hundred weight ice company, and yeah. man, just guys, look at this cocktail. It's beautiful. Uh, and in that, you not only have the orange peel, uh, but you have the lemon as well peel and the pith turned in, oil expressed oak, and it's, it's great in all rum, and, and what a delicious cocktail, man. So cheers. So, so Matt, yeah, cheers to you. Social distance cheers. Uh, so with that, we're going to let Maddie is going to start making our rounds. Yeah. If the judges are ready. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's let Maddie go do this part kind of thing. You decide those rounds. You know them? Okay, great. How about that, guys? Okay. Give it up, give it up for Matt. Yeah. yeah. That's, hey, Matt. That's fantastic. Okay, good. So he's going to get making those rounds. Um, how are the judges enjoying this first round? This is our control old fashioned. Tonight we're doing a blind tasting. We're not going to know, uh, the judges will not know um, what whiskey's expressions are in the drinks. We have no clue what the brands are whatsoever. And we're going to be judging this. So, what are the judges thinking of this, this first control round? It's, it's delicious. delicious. I mean, I mean this, this is a, a this is a this is a standard as far as an old fashioned old fashion goes. You know, as as Matty was as, saying, uh, just sugar, water, spirit, bitters over a large lump of ice with, with both twists. This is a this is an this is an egg right? bar, right? right? So this is a great leveler for us to start leveler with. To start with. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, someone's saying if you guys want to mute uh, when you're not speaking, so it's going to help some of the delay, right? Uh, at the table, yeah. since you guys are so close, maybe mute. Uh, and there you go. Okay, great. So, so yeah, so as our next round is coming out, I'm going to let you guys know just a little bit of the criteria. I think I might want to hand it off to our executive judge. Do you want to talk a little bit about how, how the drinks are being judged tonight and what the criteria is? Sure thing, Matt. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, we have a series of extremely similar cocktails, uh, one to the other, and certainly the whiskeys will, will differentiate themselves within that. But given that we're using the exact same recipe for each of them, and we have five rounds of them, plus the, uh, the Dutch Kills uh, Old Fashioned, uh, we wanted to find ways uh, to, to separate the drinks from each other with, with nuance uh, in each of the categories. So we'll be evaluating uh, based on aroma, texture, the ABV balance of the cocktail. Um, that's something to consider because the entrance in this uh, can be not just bourbon, rye, a variety of different kinds of grain and mash bills can be used in this particular uh, uh, competition within each whiskey. So making sure that additionally in, in, in conjunction with the kind of whiskey, also the level of alcohol that is being used uh, or, or being applied to this drink and, and uh, you know that it's not too high or too low for uh, to carry the old fashioned. Uh, how the ingredients integrate with each other, you know, between the citrus oils, the Angostura bitters, and of course the sugar. Um, uh, how, how the cocktail finishes, you know, how, how it stays on your palate and how you experience it after uh, you've actually swallowed the, the, the cocktail. Uh, the complexity of the drink overall, uh, in addition to the overall performance or as culminates with the, the overall perception of, of, the, of the cocktail, if you take a step or two back, uh, the stability over time. Uh, you know, an old fashioned, especially as it's made at Dutch Kills uh, and, and often as traditionally made uh, historically, you let the drink evolve over time, you let it chill over time, you let it dilute over time. In fact, some early recipes from the late 19th century, uh, the cocktails actually served um, with a spoon. So you're able to continue to stir in the sugar uh, and add more whiskey. Sometimes you'll see references to being, being able to pour more whiskey over the ice uh, so that you're able to evolve the drink over time. Uh, so, so time is a very important consideration with, with an old fashioned in general, and certainly the way that this, this cocktail and this bar executes them beautifully. Um, the overall perceived quality uh, of, of the whiskey in the drink, 
uh, and then we total up all those scores. I think that you know that last point is is a good uh, a good segue to say that we're not evaluating uh, the cocktail per se. You know, we know that a Dutch kills these drinks are being made perfectly. That's why we are here. Um, but ultimately, what we're evaluating is the whiskey's appropriacy for this drink, right? So we're yes. looking for the finest whiskey for this application, right? So yeah. we're, not, we're not saying, you know, uh, that, that this particular drink is better than that particular drink. We're saying that this particular whiskey really sings in an old-fashioned application, right? And that's an important distinction for this particular competition. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks so you, much Matt. for going. <laughs> thanks. And the, the studio audience goes wild. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. And guys, you're watching in, if you have questions, we will be fielding some questions. You notice there's a Q&A section if you're tuning in. Go ahead and uh, ask some questions. Uh, mostly you'll be watching us judging tonight, but there's a Q&A. Go ahead and put your questions in there. We'll see if we can uh, field some questions for the judges, and, and they'll also have a chance to speak about what they're doing as well. Um, so I just want to turn your attention to uh, New York Cocktail Expo Online Week is taking place now. So those of you who are tuning in for the old-fashioned, we actually do have a class on how to make the best Manhattan in Manhattan, um, and that is going to be with Melinda Maddox. That's going to be taking place on December 5th. Uh, you guys want to check out all of our free webinars taking place right now. Um, and that is going to be at nycocktailexpo.com. Um, so we, we do invite you to, to, to join us for that. Uh, shortly, we're going to be getting all this stuff. Now, I want to say you're going to have to, somebody asked, what, what's the brand? What's the brand? We're not going to know what the uh, whiskey brands are until the end. So you're going to have to stay till the end when, when the judges have decided uh, first, second, um, and third place, gold, silver, bronze. Um, and then, and of course, we will see all of the brands tonight. Now, these are some competing whiskey brands that have joined this competition. Uh, so those of you who also want to be joining up, if you're a bartenders out there, go ahead and sign up for 2021 competitions with New York Cocktail Expo uh, as well. We're going to be doing some exciting things uh, next year. And once again, go ahead and check out a lot of the online spirit exhibitors that you can check out right now uh, that you can engage with. You can see where you can do spirit tastings uh, and if you're in the New York area, of course, and then you can connect with those reps if you're in other locations and we can see how we can uh, go ahead and get you some uh, spirit over to you. Somebody asked, uh, Jeffrey, simple syrup versus Demerara sugar cube. Anybody have an opinion on what they prefer? Well, have we shared how this drink is being made uh, with, with the group? So Maddie, did go over that, but we can go ahead and reiterate that. The second round is coming now. It is a sugar cube on this it one. Is cube. It is a sugar, sugar, cube. sugar cube. Four four to five dashes of bitters, two ounces of bourbon, right? Okay, stir it on a big rock with a lemon and orange peel. Uh, Michael says he prefers simple syrup. So guys, we have our round one coming out and we're about to see, this is so cool, the blind tasting. How cool is this, you guys? You guys, you guys at home, do you like that this is a blind tasting? You guys think this is a cool idea? <laughs> Spencer says yes. He's like yes. Yeah, I kind of like the uh, traditional sugar cube, Matt. You know, uh, there's a little bit of a grit in the bottom of the glass that I kind of like. Uh, when you get down to the bottom of the drink, uh, you know, sort of signals that you're you're at the end of the ride. Um, but I can see both sides of the coin. And at the far, we use a syrup. Uh, we use cane syrup from Martinique. Um, uh, just for consistency sake and speed sake. But, uh, but I think when I make, well, I, I know when I make them at home, I'm using a sugar cube. Wonderful. So I've been asked to time this. We have a five minute period. The judges are, are they're tasting the, um, the longevity of the drink, the dilution. We're going to have five minutes to see how the drink and the whiskey stands up in the drink over time. We would have preferred 10 minutes, but we are on a time uh, limit here for the presentation, so we're doing five minutes. So we're gonna let the judges taste and talk amongst themselves about what, what, are, you, what are you guys tasting right now? Maybe one judge at a time with the mics muted. Uh, Sam Kasuga, uh, you would you like to take a? <laughs> Did I catch you off guard? She's like, wait, me. Uh, talk about a little bit of what you're tasting. If if you want to write notes, if someone else can chime in. What do you, what do you think of this of this round? What do, what what are you guys tasting? Who'd like to speak about this round number one? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely already so different from the first one. Um, I think from the control, uh, the nose is a little bit more pronounced. This one was a little bit 
um, more delicate, but but I feel like my initial my initial uh, impression is is I don't know. I, I think I think the flavors for me at least are a little bit more complex. Um, but yeah, so it is kind of a, a interesting contrast between the aroma and the and the palette. Ooh. <laughs> that's, a good, that's, a good, uh, that's a good sign for me if I verbally say Ooh. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, Alice, what do you what do you think about uh, thank you, Sam. What do you think about this round and, and what are you tasting and mouthfeel and, and the different parts of the, the criteria? I like this one a lot. Like I definitely get um, a lot more complexity. Um, it's, I like mouthfeel, it feels smooth. I feel like it's a good ABV balance. I get a little bit of that, that proofiness, that fire, but still get like a good um, integration with the like, Angostura and the sugar. I like it. Yeah, yeah it's definitely interesting. Um, who else would like to, Eamon, would you like to speak to this round? Sure. Sure. I, I think this is uh, sure. I think a lighter, this fresher is, uh, whiskey than the first, lighter, fresher in my opinion. Whiskey, the I feel like the, the grain opinion. comes through. I feel like the, the grain comes um, through. Um, am I, am I, I getting feedback, feedback here? Is that what's happening? Is that what's happening? Okay, cool. Uh, I feel like there's, there's a, a more pronounced grain uh, quality to this. Like, I don't, of course, we don't know what these are, but this feels to me like something that doesn't necessarily uh, rely uh, predominantly on on uh, corn, but you know I've been I've been wrong before. Uh, but it feels like something that might have you know uh, a stronger wheat or rye uh, component to it. Um, but that's just how how it's reading to me. It feels lighter. It feels spicier. It feels uh, sort of fresher, if that makes sense, rather than rounder, richer. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of I think I agree with you. Like fresher, definitely a lot more grain on this. Uh, it rem reminds me of a brand that I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I can't put my finger on it for the life of me right now. It's killing me. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I think I, I really like this one. Like the first, the first one is is delicious and delightful, but it's a little like it, like an old fashioned kind of is supposed to be a little bracing right off the beginning. This one felt a little more delicate, a little bit more complex and and uh, approachable right at the beginning, uh, which is interesting. That's awesome. Um, great. I want to take it to Southern. I want to talk to you a little about what's going on with you and, and what you're up to. And I, I do have a, I do have a question from somebody that asked, what do you think, what do you normally think about higher proof spirit and, and rise in it versus lower proof? And then tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and Amore Margo and, and things that are happening with you. Sure. Um, well, I'll address your question about proof first. Uh, I see a lot of the, the comments there saying that they prefer higher proof. I disagree 100%, um, 100 proof percent. Um, I think for an old fashioned, which is just a glass of booze with some bitters, which are also booze, typically high proof, uh, with just a little bit of sugar and water to temper it, I'm looking for 80 proof, uh, maybe up to 85 proof uh, in an old fashioned. Uh, I'm going to use utilize 100 proof spirits uh, when I'm mixing a cocktail with, uh, you know, vermouth or juice or other things, because I want it to have more backbone to stand up to kind of being watered down as it were by those other ingredients but in an old-fashioned i'm looking for 80 no more than 85 proof because i want it to be enjoyable enough that i can drink it at a, at a pace that it's not going to over dilute itself also i want to i want to have a second one you know uh, if i have 100 proof, if i have 100 proof old-fashioned i'm probably only going to have one um and then uh, as for me what i've been doing uh i mean a lot uh the pandemic has certainly changed my life in a lot of ways um um, but right now at Amoria Margo, we've expanded into the space next door and created what we call Amoria Margo Reserve, uh, where we seat only eight guests at a time. And we do a, a cocktail and snack pairing um, with a bunch of vegan snacks. You know, for nine years, I've been serving Amaro, which are herbal, uh, botanical and vegetal liqueurs. Uh, and now we're pairing that with herbal, botanical and vegetal small plates. And it's been a success so far. We've only been open for 13 days uh, and it's, it's receiving a, a lot of good positive feedback. In addition, I opened uh, in that same space, which is very much larger than my bar, I opened a store. Uh, it's called a General Store at Amoria Margo, where we sell books and bitters and barware. Um, and we've expanded into some merch of our own, so t-shirts, and I, I made a puzzle. Um, and, and now that the restrictions have been lightened up here in New York, um, we uh, can sell uh, bottled cocktails. And we can also sell spirits. We're, we're off operating as somewhat of a liquor store as well, specialty that carries a lot of Amari and bitters. Um, I see a chat just popped up and asked me about Williamsburg. 
Um, the sad fact of the matter is that in uh, January, I owned five bars and today I own only one. So all of my other bars have closed permanently due to the pandemic. But we're making the best of what we've got. We're, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging. That's right. Hey, judges, I want to call time on this round. That's a five minute. Um, so please uh, tally your scores. Um, thank you so much, Souther. Uh, we appreciate that and, and you being here with us. It's uh, special to have you here with us, especially since your great reputation of working stirred cocktails and making bitters. Uh, certainly, uh, guys, hit up Souther. Where, where can we get your book? Let's get Blitzen and, and uh, I'm just here for the drinks. Where can we get yeah, your book? Uh, thanks for asking. Um, you can go to my Instagram, which is Creative Drunk. Um, and uh, I've got a link in my bio where you can uh, buy one directly from me and I'll personalize it and sign it for you, um, as well as my puzzle. Um, and, uh, uh, and you can also pick it up at, at many of your local stores if you want to support a local store. But if you want to support me directly, you can go to my link and get it straight from me and I'll, I'll sign it for you. Um, so thanks for that. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Um, interesting um, contrast from the first round to the second one. Uh, <laughs> A fun tasting we're having here. Um, is, is anybody out there just drinking the bourbon or whiskey expressions? Does everybody have an old fashioned? Or our next round is going to be coming out shortly. We have a five minute time period on this. Um, the way this is working is that we're doing uh, scores. Uh, if you haven't heard this and you're, and you're tuning in now, and we're going to add up those scores at the end. But the judges are going to, who <laughs> Benner already says, he's drinking both. So I'm imagining he's double fisting right now. And, Man, you're, you're, you're living the dream, aren't you? Uh, old fashioned, John Hayne, that's great, man. Uh, your guys' questions are coming in while we're waiting for the next round. I might go ahead and, and see about another another question. Let's see what we can have. Uh, let's see. Everyone is using Angostura bitters. Uh, anybody doing a combination of orange and Ango as your, uh, as you, as your, your preferable mix? Or is everybody, I mean, for our night tonight, we're going Ango, if that's your question. Um, let's see. Uh, if I so, if I may, Matt. Yeah, uh, please. There was a there was a question earlier on or a comment earlier on uh, that I there is a, a misconception. I'm not sure where it came from, but I, I'd like to just uh, dispel it. Every one of these drinks is being made exactly the same way, right? So yes. there's there's not a there's not a, a a recipe that each of these has or a ratio that each is, each of these has. Uh, uh, to accompany a particular whiskey, the whiskey is being put to the test by being subjected to the exact same measurements and the exact same method and the exact same process. So there will not be a difference between any of the any of the drinks in terms of the way they're executed. Um, and I, again, I, I don't know if that was uh, said um, uh, incorrectly earlier, but I just wanted to make sure based on a comment I saw earlier, there's no difference between the execution of each of these rounds. That's right, yes, the same recipe, every single round, different whiskey expression. Uh, this is what's making this such a great competition. Typically, if you're gonna go to your liquor store, you guys are going ahead and picking up a bourbon, you take it home, you're making it old fashioned. You guys know you're, you're working with sugar, you're working your bitters, two or three dashes, uh, two ounces of your spirit whiskey expression, stirring it up and going ahead with an orange peel. And that's what we're doing, but with the Dutch Kills recipe that you guys have heard before. And we will be sending you guys the recipe uh, and we're also going to be sending you guys the revealed spirits at the end. RM, thank you. Good to know. Thanks. That's fantastic. Uh, so our next round is going to be coming out shortly. Uh, let's go ahead and say, could you use maple syrup? Absolutely. You could use maple syrup, chocolate bitters, smoke your glass, do a mix of some scotch, some bourbon. I think, you know, isn't the old fashioned one of the most rift cocktails of all time, if not the most rift cocktail? Who wants to, who wants I mean, to speak to that? I mean, I'll jump in a little bit and, and you know, maybe enlighten people. My bar, Moria Margo, turned nine years old during uh, the pandemic. Uh, we've only ever served three cocktails there, the Old Fashioned, the Manhattan, and the Negroni, <laughs> um, um, and variations thereof. So the Old Fashioned is limitlessly manipulable uh, based on, you know, uh, the spirit that you choose to use, the bitters that you choose to use. Uh, and, and the sugar, like you said, maple syrup, honey, molasses, wheat molasses, uh, palm sugar, pomegranate molasses. There's no end to the sugars. I have over 500 bitters. We have uh, every imaginable spirit. Um, you know, so the combinations are limitless, and especially when you start splitting the base. Let's get two spirits in the glass. Let's get two bitters in the glass. Let's maybe add two sugars to the glass. Like the, the math is incalculable. Yeah, that's a great thing. Thank you so much for that input. Guys, we've got round number two coming out.
How are you guys feeling so far about, about this? You guys having a great evening? I, like, as I said, I guys, it's no matter what you think, guys, you're looking from the future from the year 2080, looking back, this is 220. These rabbit ears. <laughs> this is a historical evening, guys. The judges are now getting round number two. Spencer, woo, to you. Guys, we're, we are all a part of history. Um, and uh, we wanted to have this special night. We thank you so much for joining us. Um, folks can still tune in if you'd like to invite your friends, if you want to share the feed on your social media. Uh, thanks for drinking and having a cheers with us. Cheers to everyone at home. Let's let the judges have their taste and let's uh, let them speak to, to what they're tasting in the third round. Oh, excuse me, yeah. the second round, second round. Thank you. Hey, hey, Mark, we're hanging out too, man. We're, we're hanging out like our friends. We're having an easy going night driving drinks. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> the, the judges are dancing right now. Is this a good thing? Nick, talk to me, man. Nick, talk to me. What's going on? I don't know, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put my finger on it. There's, uh, there's a flavor on this one that I can't, uh, it's multi, I don't, yeah, yeah multi, like like yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, trying to not swear, sorry, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like really fruity, multi, um, not, not unenjoyable, like I'm actually enjoying this, but it's, it's, it's throwing me for a loop and I can't put my finger on it right, right. now. Um, do you, do you like to say that you, you only know what you're tasting on your third sip. How much time do you allow your palate to cross over and so you're, you can pick up the flavors and, and know what you're tasting comparatively to the other rounds? When do you really start to absorb this round, what you're tasting, and really being able to keep the context of this round? Are you a, are you a hey, I, I, I only know what I'm tasting on my third sip? How, how are you going about, you know, judging in, in, in your criteria? My, I, I kind of take my gut reaction uh, pretty uh pretty seriously like these like my first taste is usually gonna uh dictate the next two or three tastes and the ones that come after that first taste usually either support or kind of break down that first initial uh that initial taste. whether or not the first play like first taste is the uh correct one i can't i, I that's probably not entirely true 100 percent of the time so um I don't know. I like the first. I like using that first taste and using that gut reaction because those are like unperceived, un uh, just um, flout, uh, like messing up all my words right now. Uh, <laughs> You've <laughs> had a few, folks. I've, I've had a few old fashions already. No, um, I like my first plate. I like the first taste. I use that one pretty much. Uh, as a, a guideline for the remaining case. Great. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, Porch Life Bar, what's happening over there? You know, what are you up to and, and what's happening with you? Well, so uh, I'm, I, you, you called me the, uh, the bar captain of Porch Light when we started off. I'm not the bar captain. That's where I was at Booker and Dax. Yeah, uh, thank you for correcting me. <laughs> um, oh, no, I'm the, I'm the, I was the beverage director for all the cocktail bars within Union Square House Metallica Group. So that's Porchlight, uh, Cedric's at the Shed, and we were opening another bar called Lowball, uh, which unfortunately got postponed because of the pandemic. Um, in And then I got uh, furloughed during the beginning of all this and found myself with a lot of free time on my hands. Uh, and I started making a bunch of puppet videos at home. I'm just having a lot of fun with that. You, uh, <laughs> like little how-to Muppet videos on how to make cocktails and, and uh, I keep doing them. They're having, I'm having an absolute blast doing that. I've been meaning to do that for five years now at this point or something along those lines. Jimmy um, Lawler says those videos are amazing. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I'm having, uh, they're amazing to make and they're a lot of fun. I've had Souther on a couple of them. Those are uh, some of my favorite ones to make, and I, I, I'm going to keep doing more and more of them. Um, <laughs> so so we're coming on the time here. For this. <laughs> we're coming on the time here for this round, five minutes. Um, if you guys want to uh, go ahead and, and have your scores. And thank you, Nick, for that. Those those videos are, I look, man, I grew up with the Muppets. I saw the videos. It was so nostalgic. Oh my God, they're the best. They're the it was so nostalgic, best. and I was like, that was great. 
<laughs> Swedish chef is one of my culinary inspirations. Can you, can, can you supply, Donna, Donna Crawbuck is asking for a link for your videos. Are you able to put that in the comments or? Um, I mean, yeah, I can, I, I'll, I can dig that. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean Tavern on you, uh, YouTube or all, all of my social media is at the Nick B. Uh, and there are links to it through all of those. So I'll, okay, I'll pull great. up and I'll, I'll throw in the chat as well. <laughs> and I'll, yeah, I, I just put in at the Nick B um, for everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Those videos are great. Please keep making them. Please keep making a smile. We, we need that right now. Even though we can't see them behind our mask, we feel the energy and we need that right now. So thank you. That's great. Exactly. That's, exactly. So um, while the judges are finishing the scoring, let me see if there's some other questions we could we could see. Um, hey, Eamon, do you want to speak to this one? Someone is saying, uh, David Spielman is saying, are you guys uh, clearing your palates between the rounds? Um, now, we, we don't have one, which is why I asked the question um, about transferring over, letting your palate settle, letting the paradigm shift happen to your mind. What, what's hap what, what's, uh, what are your thoughts on that for our judging tonight, Eamon? Do we need to be clearing our palates? Well, I've heard, I've heard a couple different schools of thought. Very talented spirits tasters and wine tasters alike. Um, you know, I drink water when tasting to hydrate. Uh, I'm not drinking water between cocktails because I let the cocktail or the wine, if we're tasting wine, reset for that sip. And that's, I think, what is kind of a reference to your to your third sip is the actual identity of the cocktail or of the wine. So I guess what I'm saying is like, uh, I believe for myself, at least in my experience, I've tasted better. Uh, without necessarily resetting with water because that kind of takes away all of the tempering that I've done with the the spirit. Um, I drink water to hydrate to make sure I can get through the tasting, right? Uh, but I'm not drinking water so that I can better taste the next spirit. Um, I take a sip of the next spirit to reset my palate and acclimate it to that upcoming spirit and then take another sip and perhaps a second sip to be able to taste it. So the water, the water for me is not a function of, of resetting my palate, but rather just to make sure I make it through. Um, and then multiple sips of spirit of wine to integrate it and taste it better. I know there are also a lot of different schools of thought on that. And I would imagine that there are people who differ with, with my opinion on this and my experience on this at this table. I think that those opinions should be heard, but that's my own methodology. Thank you so much for that. And Alice, um, on, this, on this second round here, just while we're waiting for our next one, what are your thoughts on this round compared to the last round? Compared to the last one, I feel like to me, the whiskey just takes over too much. I'm not really getting a, a good balance for me. Um, I'm hardly even getting the citrus oils and the mouthfeel. Um, oh. So I, I prefer the first one. And the, spice, the finish is just a little too spicy for me. For an old fashioned. Okay. okay, interesting. Yeah, because it has to be an old fashioned, right? Um, the identity of the old fashioned. Is it an old fashioned, right? But that's an important that's question, though, question. because, like, yes, you know, Nick here uh, has one of the best whiskey lists in New York City, you know. Souther has a bar that's dedicated entirely, at least 30% of the time, to making old fashions. Uh, Sam's bar, old school in, in many ways, also very progressive in a lot of ways, but I think has its grounding in the classics. You know, is that fair? What's happening? Yeah, there you go. There you go. And, you know, the UES, uh, where Alice hails from, I think also is fun and has a lot of lighthearted uh, twists on cocktails, but most of the drinks have a grounding in classics that I think is incredible and really special. So uh, uh, from my perspective, you know, each of the people here at the table might have a slightly different perspective on what an old fashioned is, but ultimately an old fashioned traditionally, at least for the last couple hundred years, is a bourbon drink made with bitters and sugar and at least one citrus peel, maybe two. And, and so we are, I think, I'm pretty sure, undoubtedly tasting whiskeys that are not bourbon, right? And so we have to decide whether or not they're doing the job they need to do. Are they making an old fashioned or is it a different drink? Right, right, exactly. And that's so important, right? I mean, incredible. Is it an old fashioned? It's a straightforward question. Um, I see a lot of people uh, asking, are we expressing both the orange and the lemon? I mean, this is the Dutch kills. We're going to send you guys the recipe, um, but we're expressing the lemon peel and the orange peel on it, uh, but we're not doing a flame. 
Uh, we're not going to add and expressing the oil into the flame and getting a burst of flame there for this version. Uh, but hey, that's all good if you guys like to do that. Um, as we're waiting for this next round, I do want to hear from Sam on what you think of this round uh, versus the last one. Are you enjoying it? Or uh, tell me your thoughts on on this on the second round. I don't think I'm way too way too long. Um, excuse me, it's my time to talk. <laughs> Cheers, Sam. How are you? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was so fine. Um, I agree with Alice completely. Honestly, um, I really love the first round, but I think just comparatively, for me, I I mean, I work in an Irish bar, so I I drink a lot of uh, different styles of whiskey, mostly Irish. Um, to me, it's just a little bit aggressive. Uh, for my palate and my 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 preference, um, I did find it very whiskey forward, pure spirit forward. Um, that completely, I did find that it would it would get better over over time. Um, but I, I also even then I, I feel like the finish still was, was so was super astringent and it was it was trying to be bitter by that point. So, um, yeah, I agree with you, but um, let's see what else we got. Yeah, so we have time on this one. I'm sure the judges have scored oh, yeah. on this one. What, Sam, what's the most expensive bottle of whiskey or bourbon you've used in an old-fashioned, uh, the Dead Rabbit or on your own? Um, I don't know, probably something like, um, like uh, Red Breast 21. It's probably, I've used that before. You do get those high rollers coming into Dead Rabbit who love to kind of experiment. And you say, hey, like, you know, it's starting to a cocktail. Like, yeah, it's cool. And you just go with it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever you want, I will make it for you. Woo! Um, yeah, but I would say that's probably like the, the most expensive whiskey I've ever used. I've never done like a pappy uh, old patch or anything before, but again, use whatever you want to use, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Sam. We're so happy to have you with us. Um, thank you. We guys, we have our third round now coming out for the judges. This is fantastic. Thank you so much, Maddie from Dutch Kills, bringing them out on time. Okay, let me know. We're going to start our five minutes uh, for the judges once they get all their drinks. And once again, guys, you know, we, we are following guidelines here. The judges are, are doing their best to be distant and, and follow guidelines. I mean, wow, what a, what a time in history to be here. But we're so excited that we could be together and sharing this evening with you guys. And, and, we, and we hope that you're sharing in the energy with us and having a great drink. Cheers. Thank you so much, Maddie. I'm going to take a picture. Um, and we have, this is round number three, correct? Round number three. We're going to start our timer now. And the judges are doing their tasting right now. So let's take a look um, at some, you know, some of your questions here. You guys are tuning in. Hey, we appreciate you all. Joshua says, appreciate you all. Stay safe. Slancha, cheers. Kesa, Keskon. Um, we love you guys. Uh, hey, man, hands across the water, love across the world. It's so nice to be able to connect with everybody. The judges are tasting right now. Um, and... Um, in a second, we're gonna go ahead and talk to another. Hey, cheers, Samantha Casiga, Slancha. Cheers. Okay, um, let's let's try this round. Yeah, this is this is a special, guys. Uh, somebody made a comment about the long um, uh, peels, guys. This is definitely an aesthetic. This is definitely part of the Dutch Kills old fashioned. We've nominated Dutch Kills because, guys, they make an incredible old fashioned. Um, why the, why the choice of soda water in the DK, in the DK spec? I, that's a question for Maddie. Uh, I'll ask some of the judges on their thoughts of this. But guys, look, it's, 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 it's carbonation, it's bubbles. Uh, there's, some, there's a chemistry that happens between the sugar, uh, breaking down the sugars, uh, combining the bitters and the sugar and the soda water so that it comes together and makes sort of a paste uh, and sort of uh, more syrupy to be mixed into the cocktail correctly versus flat water. Um, you know, um, you know, um, Souther, do you want to speak to that for a second? Why so soda water versus flat water? Yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much nailed it. It's, it's, it, we're talking about a bar spoon here, by the way. We're, it's not going to 
make the, the cocktail effervescent in any way. Uh, it's just enough to soak the sugar cube. Uh, and again, like you said, when we crush it with a muddler, it makes a bit of a paste in the bottom of the glass that's going to, um, you know, melt in and, and integrate better into the into the cocktail. You're basically making a tiny amount of syrup at a time. Uh, and the bubbly water is going to make that sugar dissolve a little bit quicker than flat water will. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to your previous question about the the most expensive whiskey and probably one up everybody in the room. Uh, a couple of years a couple of years ago, I was fortunate fortunate enough to be able to spend over a year's rent on a twelve bottle case of Old Overholt Rye whiskey that I purchased at uh, auction at uh, Sotheby's, um, and uh, you know about three thousand dollars a bottle. And uh, um, at the event, they opened a bottle from nineteen oh nine Old Overholt Rye whiskey. So, of course you had an old-fashioned made with that. I hate you so much right now because of it. I want to say that's your birth year, right? That's your birth year. Yeah. Wow. That, that. <laughs> what a great crew we have tonight, guys. I, I got to tell you, I mean, I... I Running events for, for over 10 years. We've had a lot of judges panel. This is a very special panel tonight. Um, I'm so thankful to have everybody. Cheers to all the panelists tonight. Cheers to the judges. Thank you guys so much. Um, we really, really thank you for taking your time to be with us. It's a pleasure. Uh, you know, we haven't had, a, haven't had a lot of opportunities to get out and have a camaraderie good time over the past eight months. So it feels nice to be uh distance and safe but to be among friends and to do something fun and, and exciting so thanks yeah, for having us. thank you for that comment so you said as soon as you came up man you said it's nice to be seen and i like immediately felt that energy i said the same i feel the same way um we need to connect as people we need to get together in any way that we can and and you know why we go out to our favorite cocktail bars and have drinks is to create memories to have time with those that we love and especially a drink like the classic old fashioned represents that in a way. I want to hear from uh, our executive judge, Amen Rocky, on this particular round. I think this round is a unique round. I want, I want you to talk to this one versus the other rounds and tell me about, is this an old fashioned? Um, uh, tell me your thoughts here on what you're tasting and how the spirit works in here. You know, we're blinding these. So it's difficult to know for sure one way or the other, um, but uh, for me, I, I don't know. I taste a, a little bit of smoke here. Um, I I would think that there might be a portion of the grain that has been smoked or roasted in some way for for this. Um, I'm really interested to know what it is. Um, ultimately, this is a delicious drink. Uh, I don't know. I, I think collectively, the the murmurs at the table is that this is a really tasty drink, and I think yeah, murmurs. Um, and, Murmur. and you know, in each category, I think that. You know, this, this drink asserts itself aromatically. Uh, the weight is right. The ABV is right. It integrates with the bitters just right. Um, the finish is long and delicious and, and really consistent. It doesn't get weird. The last, the, the round, round two for me, after a little bit of time, uh, uh, on my tongue, it felt, it felt a little off and disjointed. This does not. It's consistent and long. Uh, it, perfor it performs really well. And I've gone back for a few sips uh, over the last couple of minutes. I'm not sure, Matt, how, how many minutes we're in. We're done on five. Timer. We're done on five. Five minutes is over. Great. Yeah. I mean, but th this drink, this drink has been good from the first until the last I took, right? Um, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a uh, spirit that wasn't loved. This feels like a labor of love for me, um, uh, a quality spirit through and through. So um, this is atypical. You know, we, we, we spoke earlier about what it means to be an old fashioned. And if we say an old fashioned can only be made with bourbon and, and it has to be, you know, a corn, a corn forward spirit, then, you know, uh, I think none of the three spirits you've tried are, are necessarily going to automatically fall into that category. Certainly not the one we're drinking now, but I'll tell you, this is a delicious drink. And I think that it does hold to the spirit of the old fashioned, even if it's not, not technically a traditional bourbon, but it's a really, really good drink. I would drink this over and over and over again, for sure. Well, I'm, fe I'm feeling your feedback here, man. I gotta say, like you're, you're in another cubicle over there. Uh, guys, that's why my mask just, <laughs> that, this is why my mask is down. I am very far away from everyone else. I want you to hear what I'm saying, see my face and, and bring the energy out of the night. I'm gonna aim and I'm gonna ask you a question and then I want you to tell us what's going on with you. Somebody has a question, Alex Powell says, what about Japanese whiskey in an old fashioned? 
<laughs> you know, it's interesting. I was I was uh, uh, spending some time with a buddy, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Thomas Waugh. He's a bartender. Uh, he moved to California, sadly, from New York. And so uh, we won't get to see him for a little while, probably. But we had a conversation, a long conversation about Japanese whiskey. And, um, you know, I think that there are a lot of misconceptions that Japanese whiskey fits a specific style. And it doesn't. And I think there are a lot of perceptions that Japanese whiskey is exceptionally high quality, regardless of the producer or price. And that's also not true. There, there is a tremendous spectrum of quality within the world of Japanese whiskey. And there are myriad styles of, of Japanese whiskey as well. So I think that for me to answer your question by really not answering the question, you know, you can't just say, oh, we use Japanese whiskey for this because that means nothing. It's like saying we use American whiskey for this because that also means nothing. You know, there's many styles of Japanese whiskey. There are many quality levels of Japanese whiskey as there are any other country that, that produces spirits, uh, at least in my experience, in my opinion. Um, so uh, I think Japanese whiskey can and should make a phenomenal old fashioned, but it can also make a garbage old fashioned just as well, right? <laughs> So, so on, um, so, so wonderful. Now, listen, um, uh, Eamon, Eamon, uh, uh, everyone who's watching should know um, that Eamon has, um, is really a foremost expert in knowledge on milk punch. Um, if you don't know what milk uh, punch is, clarified, uh, clarified spirits, uh, clarified drink, uh, Eamon has been teaching class with, on his own and with New York Cocktail Expo, and he is the creator of Rocky's Botanical Liqueur. Uh, it's super, super delicious. Stephen, yeah. Oh, and the crowd goes wild. The Rockies Botanical Liqueur. Uh, Spencer Sterno says, agreed, amen. S Stephen Bento says, milk punch. I Look, man, clear cocktails. Are we going to do a class on clear cocktails, amen? Clear cocktails? I'm sorry, what was the question? I was so, I was so, so into tell us about Rockies Botanical Liqueur. Uh, okay, cool, yes. So R Rockies is a spirit that I uh, launched about two years ago. Uh, it is, uh, it's, a, it's a liqueur that I make in Brooklyn from a blend of green apple, pineapple, green tea, black tea, and citrus, mostly lemon, but a bit of orange and lime as well. Uh, it's designed to complement virtually any other spirit. Um, you know, whether it's an Amaro, like Southern so deep on a whiskey like like our guy Nick over here uh, whips up cocktails with so often you know a light and refreshing cocktail uh, like Alice uh, makes so deftly with sorbets ice creams champagne and uh, sodas and um, you know Sam she can make whatever the fuck she wants <laughs> because you know it's Woo! it's, it's, it's we, is it M E L K or yeah, I, I forget uh, how to spell it, but it doesn't matter. So th the point is that, you know, this, this spirit is really designed to complement other, other spirits and highlight and showcase their, their flavors, their, their characteristic flavors, um, and, and make cocktails easy for a home consumer as well as, you know, a fun, uh, a fun modifier in cocktail bars. That's, that's the whole point. And I've been very blessed. A lot of people here are working with it on great cocktail menus and great bars, uh, present company included. Um, and, and a lot of folks are using it at home and since the, the at-home cocktail hour and happy hour has really uh, found a great resurgence over the last six or seven months, you know? Beautiful. So I ask anybody, anybody who's uh, watching this today, uh, keep an eye out for and or seek out Rocky's Milk Punch. Um, you, can, you can buy it uh, directly from the website or visit your local retailer and tell them they should pick it up. Yeah, if you put in a link on where of the uh, audience can purchase that online, that'd be great if you can add it to the chat. I love Rocky's Milk Punch with scotch and a highball uh, soda with a lemon twist is, is absolutely exquisite. I enjoy it at, at, at home or, well, at you any time me, that I please. You had me make a, a Vesper with it one time. That was unbelievably fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you know what's cool about that? I enjoyed that. Like, made it with yeah, yeah. Plymouth Chan. It was really, really good. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know what's about funny that? about that, uh, Nick? I, I, I thought about bringing this up a minute ago, but I didn't want to seem like I was shilling for Sam. But um, at, 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 your, at your sister restaurant at the Modern, Mr. Patrick Smith made that Vesper with, with uh, gin, Thoreau, aloe liqueur, Rockies, and some other things that don't matter. Um, and, and it was 
it was yeah. so good. It was so good. So yeah, I mean, whether you're making margaritas or martinis or you know, sort of lighter bread or old fashions or highballs, yeah, that's that's the goal. My goal is to sort of enhance other other people's flavors and experiences. Um, yeah, that's that's the goal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Super Great. good. Super good. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Rocky, for for that information. You guys can see if you're in the chat, you can see uh, Rocky'sMilkPunch.com. Um, so you guys can can go ahead and try that out. It's delicious. Uh, we have a question from Jeffrey Whitmarsh, which we did go over. Do you guys think the quality of the ice matters? Some bartenders prefer their own. I understand. Absolutely. Um, once again, if you're at home uh, during this time, we have a lot of home bartenders making drinks at home. Guys, if you have trays of ice uh, out there with food in your freezer uh, and you have kind of stinky ice, that's going to mess up your drink quite a bit. Here we are. Dutch Kills 100 weight ice makes clear ice. These beautiful cubes, um, they keep the drink cold. Uh, it dilutes at the right pace, uh, and it's fantastic. If you can get uh, uh, any information on going ahead and making your own clear ice at home, purified water, distilled water, uh, the best information, I, I absolutely recommend that. So uh, we are waiting for our next round to come out. Um, and um, Eamon says Alice should answer this one um, about ice. Is that, is that what it is? Is that the question? Alice, you want to chime in? Your mic, Alice, your microphone. Your mic. I feel like you're frozen though. Oh, no. Can you hear me? Yeah, you, you go. My internet has been a little off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're no, gonna log all, back in. I'm not muted. Okay. So Alice is gonna log back. Uh, Wait, what, log why back don't you in. talk? But just talk through my ears. <laughs> um, <laughs> feel free to chime in on them. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Um, so I gotta say, I mean, maintaining 86. This is a great audience, guys. Uh, we've done a lot of webinars this summer. We have our next uh, round coming out right now. This is round number four, guys. This is our, wow. Okay, so we're nearing closing the end here, round number four. Round number four. Once again, guys, the judges, um, we have a judges sheet right here, okay? We are celebrating um, the centennial anniversary of the Prohibition 1920. Alcohol was prohibited. And you know what happened when they prohibited alcohol uh, the human spirit just rose to the occasion and it gave rise to speakeasies, uh, hidden bars, hideaway bars, cocktail parties. Why? Because human beings need both work and play uh, in order for us to be okay. And you know what? It's tough to keep the spirit down. We need the spirit down. So here we are in 2020. We're commemorating the centennial anniversary of the prohibition here at Dutch Kills Bar. And we have our fourth round, guys. I'm so excited for this round. Here we go. Round number four, I'm gonna, uh, the judges know I'm starting a timer for five minutes. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, somebody, uh, uh, somebody said, somebody said, uh, Spencer, Spreno, uh, thank you so much for, for, for being active here, Spencer. The prohibition made alcohol more coveted. Um, isn't it funny? It's that, it, look, if you tell your kids no, they want to do exactly what you said no to. It's, it's, it's reverse psychology. That's how humans are built. You prohibit something, it grows underground. It's, it's sort of a mathematical equation, so to speak. Um, and we have a different yeah, type of... Prohibit something, make it delicious. Uh, that's that's <laughs> uh, 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 Studies show that we drank uh, more during prohibition uh, than we did before or since. We still don't drink as much as we drank during Prohibition per capita. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, and then there's loopholes that people got around it. You know, there, there's a bar in Upper Michigan uh, whose name is me all the time, but they stayed open during Prohibition and they served shots of Angostura bitters, which are in our cocktails tonight. Um, Angostura bitters is considered a grocery item, even though it's 44.7 proof of percent, rather, so 88.4 proof. Um, uh, so they serve it by the time they still do today. And when you go there, they dip your thumb into some Ango and they, they take your thumbprint on the back of a card and then you're a member. You've got your card with your thumbprint on it. Um, and uh, Angostura Bitters created, of course, by uh, 
Johan Gottlieb, Benjamin Siegert, Dr. Siegert. Uh, it's cinnamon and cardamom bitters. It's a, it's kind of a, its own sort of category in that aromatic style, and lots of lots of imitators of the aromatic style of bitters out there. Um, but it's it's the it's the salt in our spices, right? It's, I can do a lot of stuff with cilantro or rosemary. I can't do anything without salt. So if you put me on a desert island with only one bitters, this is the one. Um, so I'm happy to be drinking drinks that are all Angostura tonight. Oh, okay, thank you, Souther. Um, we absolutely appreciate your insight on bitters. Uh, we know you speak a lot to that. And the prohibition is is a iconic, um, interesting time. Even though it's prohibiting alcohol, what it gave rise to is iconic, it's legendary, and certainly we wouldn't be where we are today without that time period. So here we are 100 years later um, in a absolutely unprecedented time. Uh, and certainly we know we're making history tonight. Uh, here in 2020, we will look back on this night from the future and know that we were in uh, in history. Yeah, we're making history. So um, I'm going to go in our fourth round. I'd like to talk to Sam, if you're on. Samantha Kasuga from the Dead Rabbit. Hello. Hello. Oh, how are you? <laughs> uh, listen, listen, I don't know if the other judges can tell, uh, but we are definitely in our our fourth 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 round <laughs> they can't tell um, so there has no points written down already <laughs> so if, if, can i uh, uh, at this time i'd like to have a social cheers to everyone on the fourth round so we can see the drinks uh cheers, cheers sam cheers to you uh okay, cheers to you. other cheers okay. and cheers alice cheers everyone at home thank you so much for joining us we, we miss everyone we miss getting together um, it's so nice to have you here. Would you guys, are you guys enjoying this judges panel? Would you like to see us together again? Let us know in the comments uh, if we're having fun with us. Sam, why don't you tell us your impressions of this round and then tell us a little bit about what's happening with you at the Dead Rabbit, uh, world famous bar, the Dead Rabbit. You guys are obviously known for the iconic Irish coffee all over the place. Now you guys are open doing to go. Think, tell us what's happening with you, what's happening with the Dead Rabbit and what you think of this round. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We were just talking about it before, um, but yeah, kind of like, like what I think an old fashioned tastes like. Um, you know, I kind of get like an American with the impression. Um, it still shines through, but also you have a nice like citrus and a little uh, sweetness to it. This is exactly what I think is an old fashioned. Um, whether or not compared to the others, I will find out. But um, yeah, this is kind of that like this is an old fashioned. Um, so great. Um, all of them are good. <laughs> bad. But all, it, it'll be interesting to kind of compare them at the end. Um, I think so. Um, you guys, so I'm distant from you guys. I'm socially distant. You guys are sitting <laughs> over there. Wait, wait. Oh! <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so I, I, I need to know because I haven't been able to be a judge at my own event in years because of my position, but are the judges do you think that the judges at this point? Oh, that's it. Timer's up. Um, <laughs> you guys, do you guys, yeah, right. It's time for me to take my vitamin C. Um, are the judges having a consensus? Do you guys think that you're connecting on what you like the best? Or do you think that there's going to be deliberation? Do you think there's going to be some mixed reviews? Do you think the judges are aligning in your views? Or do you guys think that you have different favorites right now? No, clearly some of us taste better than the others. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so what I get from that is you're saying, like, are you speaking for all the judges? You're like, well, clearly some of them are old fashioned and some of them are not. Is that what you're I, saying? I think for the most part, we're all on the same page here. Um, obviously, everyone's uh, preferences differ, but I think we're pretty much all on the same page. And again, I feel. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, these are all nice old fashions, and I think we can all appreciate them for, for what they are. Um, and that's kind of the basis of being a judge, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so did you, did you mention what's going on with the Dead Rabbit and what you're up to? And the Dead Rabbit, guys, we love the Dead Rabbit, the parlor, um, iconic bar, world-famous bar. 
Um, we love the dead rabbit, such an important part of New York and um, the world and bar history. And um, what's, what's, what's happening over there? How, how can people enjoy the dead rabbit right now? Yeah, we're doing indoor, 25% uh, indoor capacity. So um, we think come in, it looks definitely a lot different. Your original tap room, which is kind of that crazy little tiny space um, that we cram everyone into. Obviously, we can't do that right now. So we've kind of uh, turned it into a little to-go um, kind of retail side, if you will. Um, you can have, we do have a little bit of seats to the back, but um, yeah, it, 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 it's different. But then we do have our extension. Thankfully, we opened that before COVID. And so we're able to utilize that space um, to actually use it for service. And it's been great. Um, we're really, really grateful and thankful. We were closed for a long time. We only opened last month. So um, the reception has been really great. We're very lucky. Uh, who knows what the future holds? <laughs> of course. Who knows? Who knows, right? and one of the owners have been doing their online classes. Myself, the other head bartender, Ian and Alexander, uh, and we're just doing as much as we can, you know? Pandemic, so if you all need to do some yoga, you hit me up. Yeah, absolutely. So, man, oh, God, the dead rabbit. We're so, we're so thankful. Okay. <laughs> so Casey's like, the five-minute timer in this contest is turning to be like a lot like the last 20 minutes of the century club. <laughs> I love this group, man. This is like, I don't know, man. The Zooms are usually a little weird. This is a great group, though. This is a good vibe. Thank and you. I'm like, yo, know, I'm, I'm like, I'm in a totally different booth than you guys, but I feel like we're hanging out, so. <laughs> I feel like we're hanging out. We're having a great time with you guys. I got to tell you, like, the audience is maintaining 80, um, 80, the 88 of you guys are here. We're so happy you're here with us. We're having a wonderful time. Um, at this point, the, the judges should have had their score for this round pretty much done. Um, this is five minutes like my two fours or two ounces. <laughs> I love these comments. Joshua Wardrop. This five minutes like my fours. So the judges are, I got to tell you guys, we do have this panel for a reason. Um, everybody here is at the top of their game. Um, uh, Eamon Rocky, our executive judge, has been uh, nominating our judges panel since 2017. Eamon, is that right? Yeah. 2016 or 2017? Um, 1909. <laughs> <laughs> My birth year. <laughs> uh, we, th we thank you guys so much. We're having so much, we, we are having so much fun with you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, are any of the judges writing in a top three? Do you, are you starting to sort of wane in on what you think you're, no? Not fair. Are you guys going by numbers? I think it's, uh, it's still a pretty close race right now. Um, we're definitely seeing some differentiation between the the first drinks but it's still hard to create a ranking until we know what that last one's going to be you know we're only dealing with five and again i think uh, someone mentioned that uh none of them are bad they're all quite delicious um so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a you know uh, a real uh, it's, it's gonna be like a race to the bottom Who, who's gonna bottom out uh, because they're all they're all top tier cocktails made by a top tier bartender at a top tier bar like uh, everything, everything, all the components are here. Uh, the cocktails are delicious. We're just gonna have to really suss it out and see which ones didn't quite make it. That's fine. Hey guys, that's why you're here. That's why we have our experts on it. Question for Souther. Um, Souther, can you see the chat? Can you see the chat? We have a question from Julio Enriquez. He's saying, question for Souther, Ango versus Amargo Ballet. So Angostura bitters is a tincture bitters. Uh, Amargo Valet is a potable bitter, right? So a drinking bitter, like a Campari or Jägermeister or uh, other uh, bitters that you drink by the glass. Uh, so they're radically different from one another. If you're questioning about uh, the Angostura Amaro de Angostura, which they just came out with a couple of years ago, um, I'm not a big fan of that stuff. It's uh, for the category, it's ludicrously sweet. Um, they really sort of uh, uh, dropped the ball, in my opinion. Uh, everyone was anticipating Angostura making it tomorrow. Uh, and then when it came out, it kind of was a dud right away. And it sort of faded away. And, you know, my bar known for holding every possible tomorrow. I don't even carry it. Um, 
So if you're if you're talking about that one, then then don't talk about it. Uh, Amargo Ballet is a, a, a woody, earthy, uh, um, uh, brunette style Amaro made in Mexico, which I do love. Uh, it's, it's really rich and deep, and very viscous on the palate, with a lot of wood and forest floor Amaro. Um, so that's, that's my best answer there. Hope I Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, I think, I, I think uh, you... Which is a phrase I rarely say. <laughs> Because I don't really care if I piss anybody off. <laughs> uh, Southern. Great. Um, um, Michael G. I'm sorry, Southern. One one last thing before our fifth our fifth round here. Uh, which was the Amaro that Southern spoke so poorly of? Didn't catch that? Wow. Uh, okay. Amaro de Angostura, the one made by Angostura, uh, it's um, it's not bad. It's that I was so disappointed by the company for making something so abjectly sweet when I was so ready for them to make something delicious and bitter and sharp. And Maddie just said damn straight as he's passing out uh, passing out cocktails. He, he, he agrees. It's just it's not that it's necessarily bad. It's that they were it was such a disappointment when we were all so ready for a manga store to come out with a potable, a drinkable bitter that we all were all excited about, it. and it just didn't make the grade. Uh, you know, this happens when someone tries to diversify their portfolio and create something outside of what they normally do. Uh, we see these. It stumbles. We just don't, don't expect it from such a stalwart like a like Ango. You know, every single bar in the world has a bottle of Ango store bitters with an oversized paper label and a yellow cap. Uh, it's hard to tell what it is. So when they have the world market control, uh, when they came out with this tomorrow, it's just a bit of a different point. That's just my opinion. I'm just one guy. So. Stay in your lane, kids. Um, I'm going to ask them right now, but it'll be taste. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we're moving into drink number four. Five number five. This is the last one. guy. Is this our last <laughs> round? Um, last round, Maddie. Talk to us. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Um, yeah, this is our fifth round, so we want to we want to talk to Alice. Uh, Alice Tang, we actually attended a rum academy together. We were at rum academy, yes, we did. yeah, go learning tiki drinks, right? Yes. Uh, that's one of my favorite categories. I love tropical cocktails, layered drinks, take you away, you know, yeah, especially Happy. right now. If you want to take a little escape, right? <laughs> fun presentations. We had fun exactly. in that class. That was a super fun class Always. with Shannon Monster. Yep. <laughs> true, true. Um, so, yeah, so actually Shannon is holding that class, Escape to the Tropics, Tiki Cocktail Webinar. You guys can check that out right now. Uh, let's talk to Alice a little bit about what you're doing. What do you think of this round? And tell us what about what's going on at UES Bar and the new creative stuff that you're doing. Okay, well, firstly, talk about the UES. Obviously, when the pandemic started, I couldn't be at, the, at a bar or behind a bar anymore. So I'm like, what can I do? So I started painting again, which is what I originally came to New York to do, to art, design. So I started doing cocktail art. Um, I started painting cocktails and stuff like that. And so now actually um, I'm selling my prints. Um, if you go to the UESNYC.com, um, okay. I'm selling my painted cocktails and I'm doing custom ones as well. I think it's great for Christmas. So please check them out. Um, and as far as the cocktail goes, uh, I enjoy it. I like it a lot. It's really hard to have an old fashioned. So of course it's like, it's kind of tight between the five. Um, this one I'm getting like a lot of, I'm getting chocolate. It tastes very festive to me. Um, so I'm with sweeter side. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's best as an old fashioned, but I enjoy it. I like it a lot. But you're enjoying it. Like it. A good whiskey. So, so if you're, as far as, let me know about your mind. Every, the reason why we have, um, we have five panelists tonight doing the judges uh, panel so that everybody can come from different perspectives. You, you said a comment about you're not sure if it's old fashioned, but you're enjoying. It. So are you are you exactly. finding more of your marks towards saying this has to be an old fashioned or are you saying this is good? It's delicious. I like it. I'm going to score it high. Or are Both. you? Yeah. Both. first, for me, it has to be pleasant. I've enjoyed drinking it. Um, and then I go to what do I know as typically what old fashioned is traditionally. So that comes to uh, mine as well. So it's a little bit of both. 
but I think the most important is what's enjoyable. At the end of the day, it's like if you're drink, enjoying what you're drinking, that's what matters most. Um, so yeah. let's. I, I I don't I don't think uh, I don't think drinkability is on a criteria. But let me ask you: Is it yes, important for an old fashioned to have drinkability that you want to have more than one round, right? Yes. Do do, yes. do you find because do you find that there's a? Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, because um, the old fashioned is kind of the first known cocktail to exist, right? So that means something that's balanced, something that's enjoyable, something that you can easily drink, um, something that's pleasant. So to me, an old fashioned and something that's nice to drink kind of goes hand in hand. So, that's so my are you? To that question. <laughs> and it's a great answer. I. It's um. <laughs> <laughs> I think drinkability for me is an important quality. Um, tolerance is an important subject. I know nowadays yes. with people monitoring the uh, low ABV drinks and so forth, and this is a nice stirred boozy cocktail. It's one of the reasons why we love it. But does an old fashioned need to have drinkability, or can an old fashioned be so good but also be a one and done? Does it have to have drinkability, or can it be? This is a fantastic old fashioned. I'm one and done. That was fantastic. I don't need another round. That was delicious. What What are your What are your thoughts on that? That is, I think that is that is so subjective, though. It is. You can it say is. that about that. Really depends on person to person. Again, like you said, tolerance, everything. Um, but to me, it's drinkability. Um, you drink an old fashioned because it's less strong than drinking whiskey straight or whiskey neat. The point of it is to be for you to be able to enjoy I think multiple maybe yeah so drinkability okay yeah no drinkability is important and I'm, I'm going to remind the audience right now we've got really a steady audience here told in the 80s in the 80s what a great audience we have cheers to the audience tonight man what a great audience um yeah I'm going to read I'm going to read Matt, go ahead, Matt, I, would, I would step in for a second on that drinkability note and just say you know, uh, as, as a bar owner, as uh, bars that are all in this room, we have to think about that every time. Um, I do want you to drink it and have a second drink. That's how my business model works the best. Um, so drinkability is paramount to me. Like that's a that's that's a top of the list, frankly, um, because you know, no matter what we do, we're in business. We have to have to get that second drink in your hands and make the business you know profitable. Um, but I see in the chat. I don't know if you overlooked it, Matt. Someone was asking the picture here, Alice. Uh, if you could maybe repeat your where where they can find your art. Someone was asking. www.jueis.com. If you just scroll down, there should be a section for it. I'm putting that in chat right now, Thank actually, you. Alice. Yeah, scroll down. Uh, should be a section for it right there. Thank you for being with us, Alice. We're happy to have you. Thanks for having so, me. Yeah, it's a fun occasion, right? It's nice to get out and have a drink with some friends, right? Um, great guys. So one, two, five, six. guys, this is our final round right here. Um, uh, judges, the judges are having a great time. I want to ask the judges. I want to, <laughs> I want to get all the judges attention right now and say to anyone, now is the time for a retaste. We're done with the five. You've been done for a five for a while. I'm sure you know that if you want to retaste any drinks right now, are there any that you've put on your top three? Have you written down any names? Uh, or excuse me, the numbers on your top three that you'd like to taste again to see if you want like round number one, round number two, round number three. Do you want to do a retasting before that you have your final scores? Because this, we're coming down to it right now, guys. I mean, we could all just taste Nick's cocktails. Yeah, and save them. Yeah. Uh, I've kept them all. I still have every oh, single one. I have one. them all here. But, but once again, they... <laughs> Okay, but uh, okay, so if, um, if Maddie I, is here actually. So if, if anybody wants a retaste, is now's the time to, to do that. May, may I, if if my co judges are amenable, can I run down the the I think descriptors that we all agreed on about each of these? Yeah, please. Okay, uh, so that we can collectively, if if possible, decide on a retaste. We don't have to, but we could. So one was was uh, the the light uh, compared compared to the uh, the Dutch kills. 
uh, old fashioned, right? One was the really light, really uh, sort of refreshing, comparatively speaking, old fashioned. Yeah. Number two was the robust, um, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting sitting between you guys and, and hearing the different feedback, uh, but like much more robust much more and robust. very distinctly different, uh, evolved much more over time. Number three was the, at least in my mind, and tell me if I'm wrong, but smoky. Um, right, yeah, I think we all agree it was a smoky old fashioned, right? Um, number four, archetypical, uh, in terms of classic style of old fashioned, right? And number five is the one we're holding, so we don't need another one of these. Um, I heard Sam say that she wanted to try number three again. Is that right? Yeah. Because it's yeah, because it was delicious. It was delicious. Yeah, it was delicious. Oh, this last one was great. It's actually like, wow. So yeah, we have a request for, nice for number th for number three. You want to retaste? Well, she's just being selfish. <laughs> okay, okay, um, okay. So we are at eight fifty. So what happens? Happen so select your retaste now. We're gonna get our final. We're gonna get our final scores. We're gonna have Dutch kills. Maddie of Dutch kills is gonna. Other votes number two. Uh, add up those scores. Do you need to try anything else? I don't think I need to. Sam, you want to try number number three and Southern wants to try number two? Is that right? I'm no. I will hold on to this one. That's correct. They're gonna be stirred fresh, correct? I know. I've answered the question. Um that's just for the judges. I'm just picturing. Uh, I'm fine. Okay. Thank you so much. The hospitality at Dutch Kills is top notch. Um, can I have everybody? Uh, <laughs> Dutch Kills, Kills. Thank you. Thank you, Eamon. Uh, for the retasting is great. Um, what are we retasting, Eamon, again? What numbers? So Sam is retasting three. Uh, okay. And Souther is retasting two because he's trying to determine the correct winner of, of the Iron Throne, of the Iron Throne. And Iron Throne. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Somebody asked us, they said, uh, Spencer, who's been very um, vocal on our chat. Thank you, Spencer. Um, I hope someone is driving you guys home. We all Uber out here. We don't, we don't drive. It's New York City. I, I hope you guys are, are you guys loving the New York City background here? Those of you who are tuning in from all over the, the country, are you guys liking the New York City background? It's really all literally? green screen. It's all green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Matt has us chained up in a warehouse in Queens. <laughs> no, stop it. Oh my gosh. Cold. We're hungry. Yeah. We no, that is not true. true. That it's is not all true. all green screen. The, the judges right. have elected to have their sandwiches after the tastings. The cocktail expo has been yeah. down. Listen. Yeah, it puts the lotion <laughs> in the basket, man. I love you, man. I love you, bro. Um, this is a great, what a great panel we have tonight. This is the most fun I've had with a panel in a long time, I swear. I wish I get to judge my own events anymore, but I don't. <laughs> Thank, cheers, Rocky. Um, we're doing some retastings now. Um, the city misses you. I saw someone said they missed the city. The city misses you. New York is, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's hurting. It, it needs you to come back. As soon as it's safe, we want to see you back. How can we best support New York bars right now, Souther? <laughs> I think uh, some of the best ways we can support New York bars is to support legislation that will help New York bars, and not just New York, but bars all over the country. Uh, look into organizations like Thirst. Look into organizations like the Restaurant Workers Community Foundation. Um, uh, you know, go to local chapters of anything like that in your own uh, city or, or, or state, and uh, just try and get us some support. You know, we're the third largest uh, uh, employer uh, in the nation, and we've been given uh, effectively nothing uh, as far as support goes from the government. So, uh, the best thing you can do is try and get legislature change. I know your initial instinct is to, um, you know, uh, buy a to-go cocktail or or support a, a GoFundMe page or what have you. And those are those are tiny band-aids uh, on on what's effectively sort of a broken wing. What we need is legislature to change and 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 see a real change um, in supporting and helping us uh, uh, because we're all out here. You're not watching us learn to swim. We all know how to swim. You're watching us try not to drown. Uh, and it's, it's yeah. super difficult. And the best thing you can do. 
uh, as, as a viewer of this or as a, as a consumer or as a bar patron or as a lover of spirits is go and try and look up legislation uh, uh, that'll, that'll, that'll forward the momentum and help us uh, uh, through, through government help. Yeah. Thank you so much, Souther, for that. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so much. That is great. Um, everybody out there, um, we really appreciate you and your support and support of hospitality and the restaurant industry and the hospitality industry right now. We're in an unprecedented time. We're making history and we're just so happy to come together with you in the spirit of this night and uh, and come together. And so many of you have stayed watching, I'm sure, to see um, how we're going to reveal who's winning tonight and what what brands are we even tasting? What whiskey are we even tasting? Um what a great night, you guys. So we have our retastings coming out. I'm sure at this point the judges are going to be writing their scores. Dutch Kills will add up those scores. Um, and we're going to see who our first place winner is, who we are going to highlight. And then we will show you all of the whiskey brands uh, that we had tonight. And we're going to send you the recipe. We're going to send you information about those whiskey brands so that you can enjoy them as well. And we've had so much fun. We hope you guys are having fun with us tonight. Um, and we're enjoying our time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is amazing. I'm literally sitting here with one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven old fashions in front of me. If you guys, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Look at this. Look at how cool this is. Look at how cool this is. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Can you guys see what I'm, what's, can you guys see what's that? <laughs> I can't see what are you doing, son? <laughs> I, I kept this is, all of my this soul is the in most, five. This is the most fun panel I've ever, I've ever, ever been on. I have to say, man, what a great panel. I, 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 I deeply love all these people here. As Grubhub is pulling up right now. Um, we're going to be having some sandwiches. Those of you who are saying get home safe and do this, we are taking, uh, we have our waters here. We're not being irresponsible. Everybody here knows how to drink. We all we have our water. Uh, we're going to be having big sandwiches, carbs to uh, soak up some of that alcohol uh, afterwards. Uh, and we do support wellness, of course, uh, big on the wellness front. Um, absolutely. Um, and we thank you all for tuning in. So three, four, five, six, seven. How are the judges doing on scoring? Uh, can I ask, are you rounding down uh, your scores? Yeah, we got our executive judge saying, yeah. How are you guys doing? Up. You're, are, you're adding up the scores. Adding them up. You're adding them up. Cheers. Okay. Um, so, guys, so pretty soon, uh, we always do run over. If you have any more questions, I suggest asking them now. I hope that we've, we've talked to everyone. We've talked to Souther. We've talked to Nick. We've talked to uh, Eamon. We've talked to Sam. We've talked to Alice about everything they're doing. Once again, I want to urge you guys to get, we've got all the free cocktail webinars right now. If you want to learn how to make the best Manhattan, uh, register for that free webinar at nycocktailexpo.com. If you want to learn how to make awesome tiki drinks, uh, even whiskey tiki drinks, December 3rd, which best-selling author Shannon Mustafer is doing Escape to the Tropics. Uh, what's, what's the one word, the descriptive consensus note on number five? What? Absolutely. So we have we have our executive judge. Yes, yes. So so uh, Eamon Rocky is going to be doing a great uh, webinar on aged spirits, the secret of aged spirits and using them in cocktails. Um, it's going to be a great webinar. We want you to tune in. Uh, all of our NYCE educators are fun to watch. They're engaging. They're informative. They will help you with anything that you need. Uh, we know right now there's a lot of home bartenders, so there's going to be a lot of cocktail parties going on, and who knows, a lot more hideaway bars out there, right? Um, let's see. What do we have here, uh, folks tuning in? If you guys have any more questions, I suggest uh, please put them forward now so that our judges can answer your questions because um, we're going to be selecting selecting our finalists soon, and we're going to find out who wins best whiskey in the old fashioned here tonight, December 1st, 2020.
making history guys we love you thank you so much for tuning in with us hey matt i see that steven asked from uh, michigan if uh, to-go cocktails are allowed in new york like they are in michigan uh okay. and i just want to i just want to say that yes they Please are do. yeah we're, we can do to-go cocktails um we can also sell bottles so currently my shop is operating as a as a de facto liquor store you can swing into a boring margo general store and pick up a bottle of beef eater gin, a bottle of Carpano Atika, and a bottle of Campari and go home and make your own Negroni. Or you can pick up a liter bottle of Negroni for me, or you can sit down and have a Negroni in my outdoor cafe. Uh, and that's uh, that's projected to go on for two years past the date of 100% occupancy allowance. Um, so, you know, that's been a real lifeline for us, and it's, uh, it's, it's been helping us out a lot. And then I also see that Andrew uh, asked what the wonder, one word descriptor on, uh, on number five. For me, I, I wrote two words I wrote coconut and tropical. So uh, I'm really, curious, I'm curious to find out what it is uh, in this in number five. Um, but man, this has been a, a great overall experience, and I'm happy to have been able to participate. It's uh, literally the third time I've been out and about since the pandemic began back in March, and I'm happy to be among my friends. I'm happy to see you, Matt. I'm happy to see all these people participating. Yeah, and having a good time, and it's giving, oh, yeah. it's giving me a little bit of hope. Right? It's giving me a little bit of hope. Yeah. Southern, I'm so happy, man. We relate on a lot of things, you and me. Um, and we're, we're so happy to have you here. I got to tell you, man, it's great to see you. Great energy with this panel tonight. It's, 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 it's giving me, it, to be personal, a little bit personal. It's, it's rejuvenating my spirit a little bit. I, I love to be with folks. I miss being with people. And this is a great night. We're having a really great night. And we thank you all for joining us. Um, so have you reached down to Brooklyn and used Widow Jane 10 in the old fashioned? Widow Jane, we know Widow Jane. Vein, great stuff. A lot of people asking questions about a different uh, different whiskey expression tonight. Um, we're going to be following up with an email from New York Cocktail Expo. The judges right now are tallying up their scores. Um, and Maddie from Dutch Kills will be adding up those scores and selecting the number one. And we're going to reveal the best whiskey in the old fashioned tonight. And then we will reveal the second, third place and then all the whiskey brands. Because it, it turns out everybody, it, all the judges enjoyed every old fashioned, uh, which is great. But they have to select the top three. So let's see, let's see if they get along and 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 uh, are on a consensus, or if the numbers are going to decide. <laughs> uh, this is the fun part for me. I like watching the judges deliberate uh, and see if they can select uh, unanimously their uh, uh, the same first one, two, and three. Let's find out. Let's find out. If you guys have been listening, if you had to guess which number of the round uh, from the reactions, uh, who, who would you think which round would come in first, second, and third place? Round one, round three, round four. Kyra says round three. She seemed to be uh, four is number one. Round three is number one. Three wins. Guys, we're getting a lot of votes for round number three. Round number three, Rusty says three wins. Krista says three wins. Lorena says round number three is number one. Guys, I've been, man, I've seen so many cocktail competitions. I've been a, a, a panelist. I've been a judge on so many. You'll be surprised. Round number six, Stephen Fine. I don't think we're having a round number six, buddy. <laughs> you said, they said four was a classic, a modern classic. Okay. Very, very, um, uh, very prestigious and very, uh, what an honorable thing to think that you could be a modern classic whiskey expression in an old fashioned in 2020 with a cool, uh, what a cool honor for a whiskey brand to be, to say that about. I want to raise a glass to everybody again, as you guys are tallying up your scores, let's show everybody our old fashions to one of the best uh, judges panels we've had in years. Everyone's enjoying us. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Amen. Nick, Samantha, Souther and Alice. We, we, we thank you guys. We love you. Cheers and cheers, everyone. Oh, that's okay. There's your time. <laughs> okay, cheers. We Uber out here, folks. We, we're, we're being safe. Drink responsibly, sip responsibly. Um, and there you go. Okay, so. Did you say tip responsibly? Tip responsibly. Wow. Oh my gosh, Sam. Amazing. That coin that immediately tip responsibly still a pandemic tip your bartender keep yo guys look get out there visit the bars show them love 
follow the guidelines, listen to what they're saying. Guys, we got to keep the hospitality industry alive. We need your support. This is such a special part of our human existence, us coming together. Hospitality means all are welcome. That's what hospitality means. It starts in the home. You're welcome, everyone. So that's what we represent. Uh, support. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see who the winner is tonight. I'm psyched. I'm psyched. <laughs> Woo. Okay, you guys. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so as the judges are tallying up their scores, let's let's talk a little bit about more of New York Cocktail Expo Online Week. So this year, 2021. Uh, can I get a show of anybody who's watching? Who's a bartender? Who's a cocktail enthusiast? Um, who's a, a whiskey enthusiast? Are you in hospitality? Chime in in the chat section right now. Um, I see a, a Schlisselman, a bartender here. Uh, thank you so much. Perfect description of hospitality. Uh, thank you so, so much. Hospitality is at the heart of New York Cocktail Expo. It's what we care about the most. It's what brings people together. Um, you're a bourbon enthusiast. Casey's a cocktail enthusiast. Lorena says, I love bourbon. Um, David is a former restaurant cook, um, uh, Kyra Scotch and whiskey fan, uh, been drinking all over the Hudson Valley. Steven, good for you, man. Drink some water in between. Okay. <laughs> whiskey enthusiast, guy who drinks too much. Richard, cocktail enthusiast, bartender, Danny Cotman, bartender, yes. Um, Natasha, bartender, whiskey lover, Emily, a butcher. We got a butcher in here. Lucy the butcher. Hey, Lucy, how are you? We, we, okay. I'm a butcher. I taught, I taught butchery for two years at the New England Color Institute. Yes. Yeah. yes. I'm a butcher. Um, a coffee shop in South Williamsburg. Okay, that's close to us. Where are you? Uh, but the bar side only. Uh, butchers, cocktail enthusiasts. Uh, Alexis Powell's a doctor. A doctor and a cocktail enthusiast. Tell us about medicinal doses of resveratrol in red wine and we'll get along, okay? Um, <laughs> bartender and cocktail lover, Nikki Adams from Canada. We love you. Love you, love you, Nikki Adams. Oh, my heart's for you. Um, <laughs> so much. Uh, bourbon and cocktail enthusiast, Larry Goldstein. Larry and Goldstein, uh, Larry Goldstein. Seen brewer as well, no? Uh, spider Bite Brewing Company. Am I right, Larry? Yes, Spider Bite. Okay. Uh, here in New York, Long Island, uh, Larry says yes. Support local. Absolutely support local. Um, guys, um, so we're coming down to where the judges are aiming. How are we doing on the scores? Are you guys feeling like you're you're ready to hand them in? Well, Matthew. Well, Matthew. Uh, we 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 have we have. Uh, excuse me. We have concluded our total and we have given our sheets to Maddie. Uh, and we are now waiting. No way. Yep. It happened. Right you, before your eye. In fact. I, I'm like, I literally just like on the back of my neck got chills. I'm so psyched about this. I know. I'm feeling it right now. I'm feeling it right now. I'm also I'm chilly. Just, I really am. I, I swear. Like, I'm, I, you're also chilly. You got a heater. We're at Dutch Kills. They got outdoor. You do too. Shane. To I have, in a I have my, <laughs> I have my, I have my own heater, you guys. I am totally distant from everyone else, which is why I haven't had my, <laughs> my ninja mask on <laughs> the whole time. Thank you to our judges for, for, for being good examples and, and doing everything uh, we need to do. Um, you guys are so appreciated. What a night. What a, a tremendous night. Matt, I saw, I saw somebody further back in the list asking if, if my mask was for sale uh, with the iHeart. <laughs> uh, uh, whoever, whoever, whoever asked that question. Don't, that don't question. scroll back to look for it. It was there. Just, some, just someone was looking for it. Somebody, somebody says, takes, takes, <laughs> Southern, you know Southern, you man. reach a certain level of success whenever you can say shit like that, and nobody's like, that self plugging <laughs> self <laughs> motherfucker. Nobody is saying that. You, you know you reach a certain level of success when you can do that, and nobody calls you out at all. To be, and also, it's a beautiful mask. 
It doesn't say my name. It doesn't say my bard name. It just says I love you. Oh, oh, that is so you, bro. That is so you. That's. I remember we were at San Antonio Cocktail Conference, and you gave me a few of those pins. I still have them. I love it. And the matchbook. And the matchbook. Um, guys, what a great panel we've had tonight. Maddie is tabulating the scores. I'm. I'm like super psyched to see who wins this thing. We. I don't. I, we have no idea who the brands are. Uh, he says this is uh, Casey Schaefer. Where are you from, Casey? Please let us know where you're from. Uh, this is the exact moment I miss about the bar scene. We all do. We all miss the nuances of uh, how we get along. I'm sure everybody here who's been so involved in the bar scene and so influential and so important to our scene here, not New York, but globally as well. We miss, we miss getting together. We miss the energy. We miss what we've done. Uh, but, but fear not. Um, we are getting along. We will, we will have a way to get together. Uh, and share our energy together, which is the most important thing, our energy, okay? Even if our masks hide our smile, our energy will still connect. Um, yes, we're waiting for the scores. Somebody made it. We all take longer to tabulate scores than Nevada. Okay, that's fine. But at the same time, we're, that's fine. Uh, at the same time, we're going to find out. <laughs> it's not political. It's whiskey. Don't throw Maddie under the bus. Yo, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. I've got seven old-fashioned cocktails in front of me with three sips out of all of them. What a beautiful picture. What a great night. Uh, LOL, Laura Townsend, exactly Casey. Uh, anybody want to? Does anybody want to speak to uh, the bar scene and uh, expectations and, and and our hopes uh, for the future, uh, or do we want to just wait to see the exhilarating number of first uh, first place for our whiskey? Um, who wants to speak to that? And what, what do we expect from 2021? I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. And, uh, Thank it's you, just Nick. Kind of build, building off of Follow what, so, yeah, well, what yeah. Southern was talking about earlier today. Like, and this is something that I've been thinking about since the beginning of the pandemic. Something I heard Chris Ladder talk about is the ability of uh, bars to be able to get their fingers into everybody's home. Like this, this ability to like take their bar and the experience of their bar and the experience of their cocktails and all of that and actually give everyone that experience in the oh, uh, uh -oh. That experience uh -oh. Wait a in their own home and i'm super excited about seeing how all of our bars and all of our uh collective what? cocktail experience <laughs> get to translate <laughs> into that. I'm like, Southern's doing such a great job. I'm sure Dead Rabbit's like doing some wonderful things for that. And USHG, we're doing a ton of things for that. Like it's, I'm, I'm so excited to see how all that comes to fruition in the coming months and the coming years. And I love that aspect of being, a, being able to extend our version of hospitality to everybody's home. And that I'm super excited about. And now I'm really excited about all of these spirits. So guys, guys, listen, listen, listen. Are you guys, oh are you guys God. ready? Are we going to reveal number one, two, We're and three? Yeah. You're going to, Maddie from the legendary Dutch Kills. Are you, who's ready at home to see number one, two, and three? Come on, let me hear you before we show you. Come on, give me a woohoo. Woo! Kyra says woohoo. Woo! Kyra says, who ready? Who's ready? I, I'm like, I got chills on the back of my neck. This is such a cool evening. I'm so excited to see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my camera towards Maddie, and he is going to reveal to us the number one first. But also, first. what number it was for us. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll let it's Maddie take it. I'll it let, let Maddie do that. Are you ready? Who's on? Danny says, I'm on the edge of my seat. I literally <laughs> feel... I swear I have chills, and I'm not. I'm not doing that just for the camera. Are you ready? All right. You judges, are you ready, guys? Who has number one in the best whiskey in the old fashioned tonight, December first, twenty twenty? Centennial anniversary of prohibition. Number one is. Let's do it. Who's got it? What? Star Wars. Star Wars. Whiskey. <laughs> number three for you guys. That's the number three is Star Wars whiskey. Star Wars whiskey wins. Number one. Yeah, the one. Like, Star Wars guys, take a look. Star Wars whiskey. Who knew it was number three? 
He says Dutch kills one. <laughs> Dutch kills one. Guys, give it up for Star Ward Whiskey. The judges have picked Star Ward Whiskey as the number one whiskey in our old fashioned tonight. Uh, Star Ward Whiskey, you guys, Australian whiskey. Uh, they love to talk about how they are the, uh, the whiskey, Australian whiskey from Melbourne uh, for the food obsessed, guys. Uh, lots wow. of different flavor notes. It was great with food. They've got an amazing food scene here. <laughs> um, uh, guys, Star Wars has their first release. They have so many amazing expressions. You can check them out right now on NY Doctor, uh, nycocktailexpo.com. Uh, and we're going to be seeing more from Star Wars. We'll engage with them. Uh, if you're an industry, you can request a complimentary spirit tasting if you're here in New York. Uh, congratulations to Star Wars for winning number one. Amazing, guys. One more round of applause. Yes, Star Wars. You, who's this? Just did a, a virtual Star Wars tasting. Let's see. Who is number two, Maddie? Number two. Who's number two? Uncle Nearest. Uncle Nearest. Uncle Nearest, small batch, premium whiskey. What number? That was number four. Number four. Wow. Amazing, man. Uncle Nearest. Okay, so small batch, premium whiskey. You guys can check out Uncle Nearest right now. Also, um, you can check it out on nycocktailexpo.com right now for NY Cocktail Expo um, online week. Uh, get some tastings if you're in industry. Find out where you can do some tastings. Wow. I mean, a fantastic. And who's going to be our number three? Number three is Koval. 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 Woo! Koval Distillery. Koval, number five. Wow. Number five. Wow. Koval. Koval Distillery. So Koval Distillery. Um, Ko Somebody said, love the uncle. Koval Distillery, number three right here. So this expression is a single barrel bourbon whiskey distilled in Chicago, guys. Number three is Koval Distillery. Guys, let's give it up for our first, second, and third place. Gold, silver, bronze. Yes. But, and, and the best whiskey in, what? We're going to get to, yes, we're going to do the runner-ups. Best whiskey, Maddie, would you hold it up for us? Right, do. and hold it to the camera, put it forward. Guys, here we are at the legendary Dutch Kills, the iconic Dutch Kills. The best whiskey in the old fashioned tonight is Star Ward Whiskey. Give it up. Fantastic, amazing. Okay, that's awesome. So, we can do our runners up? Yeah, yeah, see there. Congratulations, okay. very good, got, very that's, good. Wow, that's amazing. Star Ward Whiskey from Australia. Have you guys had Star Wars before? Yes. You have? Yes. So there has not. Okay. Okay, great. Wow. So have any of you guys at home? We're gonna get we're gonna get to the other expressions right now. We're gonna see the runners up. Um, has anybody there at home had Star Wars whiskey? Let's see. Just so we all know, me and Souther rank ours <laughs> three, four, five. <laughs> That's it. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. All new ones, Mark. Good. All new ones for you. So uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. Um, we will reveal. Okay. So okay. Right. So give us four and then five. Okay. Um. Guys, uh, if you want to get it, no matter where you are, uh, we're going to hook you up with uh, how to get it in your area. Um, yes, you can get Star Wars where you are. Uh, I'm going to put my email right here. Okay. Uh, I'm putting nycocktailexpo uh, at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach me there, and I will certainly make sure you guys can get any of these expressions, whiskey expressions, so you can enjoy what the judges have enjoyed. Are you ready to see the the uh, the, the uh, runners up? Yeah. The answer is yes, of course. <laughs> so, so let's find out, Maddie. Let's do it. Who's Number up? Four. Number four, Old Elk Distillery. <laughs> Woo! Yes, Old Elk Distillery, Colorado. We love Old Elk Distillery. Close number four. Is a very how much? How much was it close? One, one point. One point. Wow, you one guys. Point 
for third. Really? Yeah. Guys, that that's one point uh, for one. This um, is number uh, Old Elk Distillery. That's number one. Wow, that's amazing. One yeah. point. One point. That means it's close. That's fantastic. Old Elk Distillery, you guys, check them out right now on nycocktailexpo.com for um, uh, engage with spirit exhibitors. We love Old Elk, guys. Great spirit. Let's see. And here we have Iron Smoke, bourbon whiskey, Iron Smoke, guys. Fairport, New York, uh, smoked with, um, I believe it is uh, Applewood. 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 Applewood smoke yeah. here. Applewood smoke, a delicious finish on that. Rock and roll, bourbon, you guys. And I believe the, how, how uh, close was this one? I'd have to go check. Uh, <laughs> Too much math. Was, I, so the judges, remember the judges enjoyed all of the old fashions tonight. I don't know how far the scores are off, but we have iron smoke, iron smoke, iron smoke, um, straight bourbon whiskey, you guys. Lots of incredible expressions. Um, fantastic, fantastic. What an incredible competition we've had tonight, you guys. There we go. Your winners. Give it up for everybody, you guys. Guys, come on, give it up for everybody. Woo! Okay. Yes. <laughs> Matt, I, Matt, I think it's worth mentioning, of course, that the Dutch Kills Old Fashioned was served to us. It was Elijah Craig bourbon. Uh, I see a lot of people asking yeah. what was the original one that we got to control. Uh, so all the cocktails were made with two ounces of bourbon, one sugar cube, four dashes of Angostura bitters, uh, a bar spoon of, uh, of uh, seltzer water to make a syrup out of that with both an orange and a lemon twist. What a great competition and a way to do it uh, so that we're really comparing apples to apples. Uh, oftentimes I'm asked to judge competitions where there could be literally five different drinks that are all delicious. You have to choose which one kind of one. We're really comparing the same drink side by side over and over. We can make a, a, you know, a consensus and Absolutely. obviously the, the table came together and, and made, made this great. Thank you yeah, thank so you much, much, everybody. Fun, what a great thank you to nominated bar Dutch Kills. You guys come down here, have some to-go cocktails. Yeah, Dutch Kills. Please visit Dutch Kills. Come here in Long Island City. This is one of the most iconic bars. Come here. Let's support. And thank you to our judges panel, you guys. We'll see you during New York Cocktail Expo online week. And we wish you a very, very, very good evening. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Get on safe. What? What? <laughs> Uber home safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. This is fantastic. Yeah, so much. Okay, we'll see you next time. Woo!